What is up, punks? It's Shinobi, and we are bringing you a special edition of Block Digest with the Bitcoin Rabbi um, to continue a little interaction of ours on Twitter about uh, multisig. <laughs> so I, I think to sum up uh, on the whole, um, Rabbi is rather for it, and I am against it in most uh, situations. So I figure we could start off with giving our our own uh, pros and cons list there. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me on. Glad to have you. Uh, do you want me to start? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Probably uh, better because my brain is still kind of booting up. Sure. So I, I think that in the end, we're probably not going to disagree all that much, but we were kind of going back for, and back and forth on Twitter. And I figured we could kind of get this conversation settled a bit more if we actually like talked it out. Um, so basically, I've been really doing a lot of experimenting with multisig and some of the like more user friendly wallets that have come out uh, in the past year or so. And I'm pretty much convinced that if anybody's got a life-changing amount of Bitcoin that like is either their retirement plan or their life savings or just something that's really significant. I see it as there really are two options and one is to use a trusted custodian, which is something that I would, you know, recommend to a, a senior citizen who doesn't know how to use a computer, but they want to be, uh, you know, exposed to the price of Bitcoin. Or if you do have some uh, tech savviness, we might not even be at the at the point of UX level today. But in theory, a, a multi-sig setup, I think, makes much more sense. And I would not trust a uh, life-changing amount of money um, in a basic standard uh, single uh, single sig private key with 24 words. Um, I just think that there's when you tell somebody, you know, oh, here's your life savings, here's, you know, a life changing amount of money, it's these 24 words. You can't, if you lose them, then you lost all of your money. And if they're stolen, then you then you've lost all your money so you don't want to have too much redundancy because then they could be stolen but you don't want to have uh you know too much obscurity because then it can be lost and so you have that that dichotomy that problem when somebody is trying to protect one private key now the wallets and the user experience of setting up multi-sig is still very far away from being friendly enough for a beginner and i wouldn't expect anyone who's a beginner into bitcoin one to have a life-changing amount of money uh in bitcoin because you need to really be able to understand it um you know before you dive full in and, and and experiment with it so i would totally expect someone to work their way up to it but um once you once somebody's made that decision um I, I don't think you can just tell them like here just these 24 words it's life or death basically but when you're when you start working with multi-sig then you know it's it, it's not like having a bars of gold under your pillow because you you there's so many different ways that you can divide it up and have that redundancy but not be afraid like we can talk about more details how you can avoid um you know your friends or family or lawyer or or, or wherever locations that you put it in avoid them um colluding against you because they they don't have all the information that they need so i just think that you know obviously it's not going to be for everyone and it depends how much you have and it depends how long you're you plan on on hodling because if you if it's a short-term thing then it's annoying to have to move to multiple locations but i think having multiple locations uh private key you know divided multi-sig it, it, it's it's something that's going to become and it is much more prevalent and much more necessary and you know from using it the past a uh, year or so, I, I just like have, I think that's, I, I used to like really be focused on lightning, but you know, I don't spend that much Bitcoin and I don't plan to for a long time, but it, I, I, I've switched over my, my main focus and interest into multi-sig because I think that's something that affects really hodlers and affects a more, you know, significant uh, amount of money. So that's kind of my, my big picture vision of, of multi-sig. Well, you know, I can kind of agree with a lot of that, but in some ways, currently, 
Um, I'm kind of along the opposite lines. Like, I really think that for now, multi-sig should really just be the thing emulating a hardware wallet for people who don't have a lot of money. I mean, for instance, like, let's say a buddy of mine uh, finally jumps the shark and he buys a couple hundred dollars of Bitcoin. I'm not going to go and tell them, go buy a hundred dollar hardware wallet to store three hundred dollars of Bitcoin. Like, that's kind of absurd given those values to spend a third of what they invested in Bitcoin just to secure it. And my thinking has always kind of been if you do a simple multi sig between something like a phone and your desktop you're spreading your risk there a little bit so that you don't just have one, you know, compromised device completely screw your whole stash. And I really feel like, you know, two big problems with multi-sig, just in general with large amounts, are one, you know, kind of spreading those keys around. Like, not everybody has places they can do that you know not everybody has a secure trustworthy set of family members or friends or places they can just hide things and even if they they think they do do they like you know what i mean well, is there some so, resentful friend in the group who who looks and, and goes fuck the guy who got into bitcoin earlier like that that can really become a deep hole of like is this really a sound like setup i have so there's a few things that i'll i'll just say about that is that when you're d uh, distributing your 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 keys um I mean, one, you don't, it, it could be that you're not trusting anyone at all. Maybe you're using um, a, uh, a safety deposit box or something like that. Or you're, even even if you have uh, your, your home and your place of work or something like that. I mean, you're right. If, if somebody has no um, trusted friends or family, it makes it more difficult. But you don't even really need to put that much trust in them because – let's say you give someone one let's say you just give someone a document you know it's a aunt or uncle or something like that and you say and it could you could have multiple documents in it you know just ask them to to back it up for you they don't even need to know that it's bitcoin that it's a private key and even if it is they might just see okay there are 24 words here i guess this is bitcoin you know if they wanted to to get again to to uh try and steal from you or harm you one, they may not know what the quorum is. So if they don't have the the public keys, if they don't know what the other wallets are, then and they don't know who else has them, then the amount of damage that they can do to you is really limited. So yeah, if you don't trust anyone in the world and you don't have anyone, you know, that friends, uh, if you don't have any other locations and you never leave your home, then okay, then I can understand that can be more difficult. But a lot of people have, have uh, friends or relatives or, or that they wouldn't trust all their money with, but they can trust them enough with this because there's not that much damage one individual could do. Um, and uh, that's, you know, that, that makes it, it, it... The problem with the, pro, the single key is that you keep one in your house, you know, there's so much either damage that can happen in your house, either theft or a um, or a fire or something, you know, I whatever. There are lots of ways to deal with fire and there are safes and things. But essentially, when you leave your house and you go to the grocery store, that means your private keys are one single point of failure sitting in one location and you're not there. And that, to me, like, you know, I would I'd go on vacation or something like that. You're not going to bring your life savings with you on vacation. But then what? Are you just leaving it in your house for two weeks or something? I mean, do you hire security for that? So that, these are the kind of things that I, I thought about of why it made me very uncomfortable to have just, you know, a, a decent amount of Bitcoin in a single sig. But sure, if we're talking about a few hundred bucks, I mean, you can't even afford to run a node basically if you only have a few hundred bucks. So like, I mean, it's basically play money at that point. A really serious, uh, you know, Bitcoin storage situation, we're talking like at least $1,000 between um, safes, hardware devices, a node, you know, whatever other security things that you might have around it. So yeah, we're, I, I, I
I mean, the the more when when we're talking about a more serious amount of money, the person either has to be deciding that they are serious about setting up a multi sig or they're using a custodian. I just don't think that a single sig, uh, you know, uh, does the trick. Well, this is kind of why I harp on about physical security with key storage devices. You know, if you look at the the um, attack that the ledger did on the cold card that took over two hundred thousand dollars, like that's kind of where where I come at from harping on about physical security of devices. Because if you aren't <laughs> considering physical security then you're not really thinking through the threat model long term. Right, meaning having your your physical location protected, you know, your home, but that's what I'm like that well, works not just that, while you're at the, home, the device you know? itself. Like right, if, the if, device if somebody yeah. Well, the device, you know, you can have the the biggest key, the biggest, um, you know, pin code. But what about your twenty four words? That's the tricky thing. Now, there are if you want to use the um, the cold card uh, setup where you have a uh, encrypted uh, SD card. Mm -hmm. That you know, that's one way. But I I don't trust uh, having a digital back. I don't think it makes sense to have it be a digital backup. So I, I like the steel options, you know, all of the various different ways of of having your your words in steel. And with that, I mean, there's only so many ways you can protect that. You can hide it, you can put it in a safe, um, you know, you can protect it with weapons, you protect it by physically being there. But again, that's, it's mostly about you you know, being there to watch it. So, yeah, are you always going to be there? Enough, Rabbi. You okay, can so cut a hole in your wall uh, and uh -huh. put it in there and plaster over it again. And hey, okay. who knows that's yeah. in there? Like, you can really get inventive if you put your mind to it. That's true. But then, all right, so then we have, okay, so, so the, a few other, now these might be getting more obscure, but a few other, like, things to worry about then is, okay, fire or devastation or something like that. You come back to your house and, or let's say, you know, you have to run out of the house. Um, you know, in the middle of the night, uh, you don't have that. And that's literally your only backup. So you, you know, maybe you'll get back to it someday after the, you know, the, the, the fire trucks come and, and put, dig it away. Are you going to be able to find it in that, in, in that whole, uh, situation? Maybe for some reason you just can't come home. You, you know, you, I don't know what kind of situation that could be. I don't know what kind of things people are involved in, but the idea that your entire Bitcoin stash is, is stuck to one location seems like almost antithetical to the idea of Bitcoin being this, you know, uh, all pervasive ledger, you know, global ledger that you just have to like be stuck to, to your one house and one, 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 uh, address. And that's, that's where it is. The idea, the idea that you could have it be like essentially everywhere, um, you know, that you can, you could be, never see your home again and you could recover your funds by, by, uh, getting your way back. Uh, that just seems like a cool thing. Uh, to a different topic though a different point of it though also multi-sig helps a lot with um inheritance situation so like yeah what yeah. you might have your private keys hidden in a wall in your house somewhere but then you know if you need your next of kin to be able to have access to them pri the the multi-sig also helps with that yeah someone wrote in the comments shamir secret secret sharing is also an option uh, yeah there there are ways it doesn't have to be technically multi-sig uh, and i've like thought about the idea that in some ways a passcode um you know, a 25th word is kind of like it can achieve a similar thing or a Shamir secret sharing or something. I haven't like compared it so much, but multi-sig just seems like so elegant and so like built in that uh, that's that's what I've like really liked. Well, here, that's kind of a lot of to topics. Kind of <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's well, I mean, ultimately what we're talking about is key management. This is a pretty wide space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But um, It's basically everything. <laughs> You know, one of the you know, things for the I do is I have an actual initialized cold card sitting somewhere with somebody with keys on it, and they don't know the pin. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know the challenge words. They All they know is this device is sitting there. And so kind of to get back to redundancy, you know, 
that's a backup for me that I can go get. As long as that device stays functional, like I can go get my money if my home completely exploded. <clears throat> and it's not a secret. It's not something that I have to trust that person to, um, you know, not take and run off with. It's an actual cold card, which has shown a cost of upwards of $100,000 to actually crack that device and get keys off of it <clears throat> with one chance to do that. So, like, you know what I mean? Without even touching multi-sig, like, you can, there are ways you can achieve that kind of redundancy, but security against, you know, a malicious actor or somebody who wasn't trustworthy. And it, it doesn't come along with all the, the complexities and the trade-offs of exposure. It's just like, I know where I put that. That person has no idea how this works, and it would cost them way too much money to figure out how to get into that <laughs> like it's not happening yeah that that definitely seems like a pretty you know there are some challenges with that of one you know if the device it, it, it gets bricked or something if they accidentally what if somebody picks it up and and starts typing into it and tries to guess the code and they don't realize and you don't realize that that thing's been bricked so, you know, it's not that hard to brick a cold card. So you are relying on that they're not going to brick it or one of their, you know, their maid isn't going to try to brick it or something like that or, or do it by accident or maybe it just gets damaged. Maybe it, you know, the, they have a flooding in their house. So you there's you still kind of have a you got mean, a backup i could say the same things about any kind of multi-sig backup i might leave in the same place right but with a multi-sig let's say with a two out of with a with a two out of three multi-sig you're talking about six um six uh pieces that that you only need two of them so you've got a lot more um leeway with damage with theft with loss you know before any um catastrophic loss happens to your funds because if you've got you let's say you keep you know uh, you've got three cold cards or a cold card a ledger and a and uh and a treasure and you have them in your location you know one in the house one in the place of work at work uh, and one in you know in a um a uh, cold uh, safety deposit box and then you know by three different family members or friends or something now none of them can really collude with each other and they don't even know that they what they have um but if any single one of them is damaged you know there there's a lot more that you can work with and again if, if someone is someone going to do this for a hundred bucks or a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars even it's still that's kind of a lot to do but you know if bitcoin you know what somebody who had a thousand dollars of bitcoin uh 10 months ago now has ten thousand dollars someone who who bought 10 you know uh, ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin uh in march has you know has a hundred thousand right now so they things can move quickly and and you have to be kind of always planning for whatever you're securing your bitcoin for you have to be thinking like 10 or 100 x uh what that is and also all the things that you d described uh, make it more difficult for for inheritance you know the person that's holding your cold card for you what happens if you disappear you know how what are they going to do with it get very very sad <laughs> <laughs> right right well you know it depends you know and they, if you've got kids and the family and stuff and you want them to to be able to have that so then like having that plan basically that i think that that's one of my main things you know i don't you maybe you've heard, i've got six kids i've got you know a nice mm -hmm. uh extended family uh, i i very much as much as the security and trying thinking like whatever these random scenarios of damage and loss and stuff a, a big part of it has been thinking about it from a inheritance point of like what's going to happen who, who's going to get access to this uh how do i make sure that uh you know my heirs have access uh when i'm not around but that it basically puts no extra um risk 
you know, uh, during my lifetime that I, I'm not just like handing out private keys to people. Uh, so that was that's another the the combination between those those things. Uh, uh, I think you know for a certain section of people that have a certain amount of Bitcoin, uh, it's going to be. Uh, they're going to have to decide and and the, if the decision is you know uh, they've got a, a million dollars worth of bitcoin are they really going to just like keep a, a 24 words you know in their wall or something like that or on one cold card or are they going to use a custodian which is not you know we don't want that so kind of we've as bitcoiners we've got to be encouraging the development of this multi-sig kind of thing so which I, I i've seen like you know there's a bunch of new multi-sig wallets like specter and um you know electrum is is getting better at it that's really what what started my whole interest i think with like electrum 4.0 you could use a, a cold card with multi-sig so that made it like you know that's when i really started messing around with it well you know i could still say well here first uh, to troll a little bit <laughs> that's the sound of me having too many cold cards um <laughs> but um you know i i could have a bunch of these scattered around um with different pins you know with the actual hardware cost in terms of the security model scattered around and if you really want to be paranoid on top of that you can add a passphrase too and you can get all of those those redundancies but i am still i just like I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of come back to like really the core of what i think started this on twitter i just really don't like how multi-sig is thrown out there as just the thing everybody should use because th there is this massive tendency in this space for that to happen with things and then all the caveats that get attached to that kind of get chopped off as it relays through the game of telephone. And then you just have a bunch of people go, oh, what, multi-sig? And they start screwing with multi-sig despite having no clue what those caveats are, how they should handle this, what they should be doing. And like one of the core things that really bothers me about this is the need for that pub key. Like, if somebody loses a public key in a backup with a multi-sig, they're fucked. And if you're just using a single sing address, there's zero risk of that. I mean, like, even yeah, with I'm not the block so, digest... Yeah, I'm really not but worried real about that. that. Real, yeah, real go ahead. Right. Sorry, sorry. Um, the block digest donation address is a multi-sig set up with one of the guys who was on the show when we first started years ago. And he wound up kind of... He stopped doing the show and kind of drifted away. Um, and he, his key is kind of just gone. Um, I literally myself um, once trying to access my keys for that realized I lost the, the password. I have to go recover my keys and went, oopsies. Um, I, I had to go dig around through our YouTube history and find the video where we actually set that up to find his XPub because I lost my copy of it in the wallet file that I forgot the password to. Like if that uh, had, if that had not been there, if there had not been a, a backup of that somewhere, that would have been oopsies. All the money people have donated to us would have been gone. Yeah, this is a totally um, even for like a very advanced Bitcoiner, the idea that you have to protect the private the the public keys um, as well is like really uh, counterintuitive. Um, but uh, I I'm not so worried about that because the thing is that they're not, um, you know, security sensitive. The only thing is that they're privacy sensitive is that, you know, if somebody has access to them, then they can, um, you know, they, they can see how much money you have in that in that uh, multi-sig. But I mean, because of that, that's the only real concern, which is a concern, but I, I feel like having a, 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 you know, a high redundancy level of pub keys, it, they can be stored with the private keys, they can be stored on the cloud, they can be stored, you know, you can have them written on your refrigerator. Yeah, I, I'm like exaggerating, but 
I, I think that obviously someone that is doing multisig has to know this. And I, what you said at the beginning, like people shouldn't just be jumping into this. I agree. I'm not really saying that now, you know, today everyone should be jumping into multisig. I, the, even the best um, wallets that are out for users um, are still like basically a beta. Like they're they're really there's not anything that I think is is totally um, you know gr great uh, and, and like standard acceptable for for everybody to use at this point. But um, but I'm just saying like that's got to be the direction. You know that has got you know neither is lightning. Lightning is also not. I'm just saying that that I think is the in the future when there are you know i mean right now there are bitcoin millionaires and stuff like that right now i think that they are basically incentivized to use custodians and to he keep their their funds and exchanges or things like BlockFi or whatever and like have somebody else you're basically using somebody else's multi-sig you know that there's no other way to to really securely safely store you know a million dollars worth of bitcoin except multi-sig and right now the choice is between your own and somebody else's and right now, a lot of people are choosing to use somebody else's multi-sig. Well, see, this is kind of why I'm bullish, you know, for multi-sig as a service. For, like, the more the Casa or the, the Caravan, or not Caravan, um, the Unchained um, Capital Vault model. Because, yeah. like, you, you really just need that hand. And, you know, uh, I kind of want to call back to your comments earlier about spreading seeds around. And this is kind of a big issue with needing to keep the public keys. You know, you brought up keeping those with the seed backups, um, which I think you should do. Absolutely. Um, especially if you have if you're using multisig in the first place because you have a significant amount of money. Well, that kind of blows the idea of just handing somebody a seed and nothing else and them not even knowing how much money you have. Now every person you entrust a, a backup to, they have those expos because they should be backed up with the seed and now they can learn how much money you have. And that can be a factor in terms of who are you giving these seeds to? Are they going to scratch their head one day and start wondering who else you gave them to and thinking that's a lot of money? Yeah, that's a possibility. And, and you know, depending on your circumstances, you're going to need to decide. Maybe you don't keep, it, you know, if the uh, the person that you are entrusting your key with, um, you whether or not they can also be trusted with a with the, the public keys. I would basically think that if you are trusting someone with a key, then they should be someone that you trust with um, one of the pub keys. But maybe they don't know who has the other um, you know, private keys, the other seeds for the for the multi sig. So you know, different situations um, can require you know a, a customized setup. And yeah, I, I agree with the um, hand holding services, the multi sig as a service. Yeah, I'm I'm I have uh, encouraged many people to use uh, Casa and Unchain. I have um, looked at both of their services. I'm like a little bit more. Um, uh, you know, well, <laughs> sure. No, I, I'm no. I was just gonna say that I, uh, uh, personally, you know, t signed up and like went to go try them out, and um, okay. and I was like, I just can't. I, for there was something personal. I for me, my Bitcoin. I I felt like I just need that that if everybody else in the world disappeared, you know, except for the miners, and me and the miners exist, I want to be able to have you know the my own setup that I don't need to call anybody. the The idea of calling somebody or you know having an account with someone and then my Bitcoin is attached to some kind of account because then they obviously they've got all of your pub keys, so they've got everything, so you lose all of your privacy there mm -hmm. um so personally I, I wasn't comfortable using those services um for myself but i recommend people use them i think they are good services and that people should be using yeah i mean like i'm, I'm kind of at the point i'm trying to convince people to um kind of start looking at that because 
some of my friends have been having some really big screw ups um, in the last year <laughs> that are just kind oh. of filtering their way um, to my ears. For instance, a friend who moved across country um, this year and didn't tell me for three months that he just kind of lost his word seed in the moon and then went, <sighs> um, should I like do something about this? Like, what, what, what do I do? But he had, did he have his device, his hardware device? Yeah. Um, we, okay. It, it got right. sorted Ooh. out. We, uh, we got things moved to a new seed, but it's for three months. Um, his seed oh, was boy. floating around who knows where in the world. And it took three months for him to go. What, what, what do I do? Um, boy. Yeah. This, when we started this conversation in the DMs, you said that, it, 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 like you had apparently just recently like got off the phone with someone for an hour just trying to teach them to set up a cold card with Electrum and you were like frustrated about that and you're like how can yep. you go and tell people to use multi-sig I can barely get people to to do you know basic uh, you know hardware usage which I understand that and that uh, that's a lot of those people are, are not ready for it and like who knows it might be five years but i can imagine a like in some amount of years where multi-sig is just like this you know there there will be you know people there's like ledger live is supposedly the the uh the the best um user interface hardware wallet stuff like that's it's it's professionally designed or something there will be the the open source multi-sig version of that sometime down the line it might be with specter might be with something else but like there it's going to get to a point where even a relatively you know tech savvy person who's been using multi-sig or using the single sig for some amount of time just says like oh you know what my bitcoin is worth enough now that i i feel like i should step it up and i think that should just be like in people you know in the radar that that there is a way to step it up and that you don't have to get afraid to uh you know of holding your own keys like there is a safer way to do it well, I mean, I'm just not convinced we are anywhere near that point yet. And Well, how far do you think we are? At least a couple years. I mean, you know, we, we haven't even touched on um, one aspect that I think is really important. Um, the fees and the economics. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with you. One, uh, uh, totally, I would say at least a couple years away. Like this, the or 2019 is the first year that it was even really possible to do a good multi-sig with um with a with a purely ux without having to um you know put anything into the the code of you know into t writing it into the uh, bitcoin client in in bitcoin core i mean uh, maybe electrum had something before then but you know this year in or in, in sorry in 2020 uh un, you know unchained release their um caravan okay, yeah. which is their like open source version of of what they do uh electrum i i, I forget I what exactly caravan, dude i fucking love it so i ha i've used caravan um and i like what i really love about all of these uh, multi things is that they're all interoperable like that if you make a caravan wallet you can um import it to other like i i really like that there's not a that multi-sig is is so since it's native to to bitcoin it's not like you're setting up a caravan wallet and it's a caravan multi-sig wallet that you need to do on a caravan on a different computer like you can set up however you want to do your setup whether you're using electrum or caravan or specter or lily or writing it in bitcoin core and then you can really take that same wallet and just uh, go to any computer anywhere, download any software that if any of them like go rogue or go, um, you know, out of business or, or disappear or something, you can just use it somewhere else. So that's, that's a, that's a great thing. I don't think people um, understand that if they haven't experimented enough with multi-sig. Well, you know, I, I kind of wanted to touch on like the fee economics and stuff, but before that, um, I have a fun little tangent. All right. So I am pretty sure um, that I am the first person to ever do this, but um, 
in combination with Caravan and a tool put together by um, Trustus Inc. Um, from BTC Dakara. He's a Japanese Bitcoiner. He made a little tool to take the um, the message that an open dime signs to prove that it has the private key, like the little tiny nonce that's too small to actually sign a Bitcoin transaction. And I made a multi-sig out of open nines, <laughs> two or three, <laughs> and, and loaded that up with, I think, like 0. 0.001 or something like that. But I just gave that um, to a relatively normie um, buddy I got into Bitcoin, pretty much the one buddy that I got into Bitcoin before 2017, and um, as an experiment. <laughs> so what did you, you gave him three you gave him three open dimes yep and it's a it's a two of three uh, multi-sig um with like 0. 0.001 on it and i just gave it to him as an experiment and pointed him at caravan and i was just like figure it out and let me know how it goes <laughs> so uh, where did he end up uh, did he did he get it uh set up on caravan um, I'm still waiting for a progress report, but he has to figure out how to unload an open dime, import that key somewhere, and then um, reconstruct <laughs> the uh, multi sig and caravan <laughs> with that trustless tool. Huh. So I, uh, uh, I also want. We will talk about the the fees, um, but uh, you know, I did a experiment like a few months ago with making a 15 out of 15 multi-sig and you said said like oh well these were first of all we ran into a bunch of troubles and like uh you know we it took us a few days to get things figured out but a lot of the people there had never used electrum and had never used multi-sig and so it really it wasn't i you know if you are holding someone's hand through uh the setup if they're you know obviously some people have a harder time with uh with computers and they have a har harder time understanding a bitcoin transaction i definitely don't ex uh, expect people to do a multi-sig for their first wallet and their first transaction but uh, people who are a little bit tech savvy it's it's not that far it's not like fancy and nice looking yet but it's not that complex to do it even on electrum or on specter it's uh you know if you've used a hardware wallet for a certain amount of time it's i, I think a lot of people could get it and, and try it and especially if they've got someone walking them through it um but the, let's talk about fees because you i you had said about the the fees of the fees of a of a segwit multi-sig you know two out of three i i haven't looked at it that deeply but i don't think that the it you know it, it when we did a 15 out of 15 the fees were gigantic i forget it like well, the fees were like that, thirty thousand kind of sats expected. i mean that was ridiculous <laughs> obviously you know it was to send i think it was sending million sats and the fee we even did a low fee but it was like the 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 was it three thirty thousand kilobytes? Oh, I could look back at it, but it was an incredibly high amount of fees. Uh, you know, just the the size of the transaction was gigantic with fifteen signatures on it. If but I, for two signatures, thirty right, k sats, it should be somewhere around ten bucks. I think it was fee. Uh, the The issue isn't actually how many sats we paid. It was it's how many how big the transaction was. That is what I'm trying to remember. Because oh, I could probably look it up on a um, on a uh, explore. Yeah, like I've got the transaction saved somewhere. I I don't know. I'll see if I can find it. But it was you know meaning I don't think we paid a high uh, sats per byte fee because it was just like a low fee time. But I the size of the transaction was was giant. Mm -hmm. but, but a that, two out of three kind shouldn't of be. Though you know what I mean. How does it compound if you're just if every single transaction is just only two signatures instead of one signature? I don't think it's significantly because you big. think about that in terms of inputs. Like the more inputs you have, there's that extra signature for every single input, 
And that's just kind of how this works right now. So really think about any kind of wallet with dust or fragmented UTXOs or, you know, like something a normie is doing and they don't understand what a UTXO is and the consequences of that. And then, holy shit, why is this feed so yeah. high? Right. Well, that's why I don't think I think multisig for what I'm talking about is like people using it for their like a retirement fund. Basically, money fund you only uh, you pretty much only put money into the multisig, and then uh, you know at some point much later uh, you transact out of it, but uh, not you know not. Oh, did you find there? Did you found the someone? You got it. I <laughs> so can we see what was the size of this transaction the size five five thousand shit uh-huh yeah it was quite a quite a big thing yeah that was so this um so so yeah you have to be conscious of that that you're not just using it for your you know play money like i you know I, there are there are probably six or seven different levels of 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 how you should what kind of wallet you should be using depending on the circumstance so like there's you know the the lightning and if you're even in lightning you know there's some amount where using a custodial lightning is acceptable um just for convenience you know for talking about really micro uh payments like you know small time stuff if you're using it for like gaming or something it, it, whether you know you obviously can use your own lightning but so it's like custodial Custodial lightning, regular lightning, you know, a, a hot wallet, um, like phone wallet, um, you know, a, a, a hardware wallet, and then multi-sig. And it's got to be depending on how often you're using them and how much each UTXO, like on averages. So the multi-sig is where it's, we're talking about that you, you, you move these funds less than once a year and when you um, save though. into it. That that's kind of the point. The point I'm trying to make is really think about the behavior of your average user, really accumulating Bitcoin to save like that. They're going to well, make a purchase. They they're going to send it to cold storage, and they're not going to condense those UTXOs. They're no, not that's going not. To that's not always true. I don't. You know, if you've got a a, a weekly DCA, you don't necessarily, um, you know, need to. Uh, it depends how much your weekly DCA is, but if it's like twenty five dollars, and okay, if you want to uh, to um, you know take that into cold storage every single time, or maybe you you have a like in Swan Swan Bitcoin, it's got a uh, um, what's it called a threshold, and I think I bet a bunch of other things have thresholds like that. It's like once you accumulate like a million Sats, then it sends it. So like. You know, a million that UTXO is a pretty good size. It, it, we're not talking about like what you use for your pocket change to to transfer, you know, a few bucks back and forth between people. Um, Here's you know. Bitcoin's biggest problem. No offense, um, <laughs> Bitcoiners just have way too hard of a time imagining that somebody bitcoins like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, the, the, fine. I mean, people are going to do what they're going to do. You can't stop them. I'm just saying that it's not, uh, it's not a, um, um, systemic problem. It's not a, it's not an inherent problem in multi-sig if you're doing it the right way. And that's what I'm saying. I'm encouraging a certain level of, of use. I'm encouraging multi-sig for a specific use case, for specific amounts. You know, it's, I, I don't know, maybe we should, there should be a guide or something that says like, if you're using this, this much, it should be in this kind of wallet. This much should be in this kind of wallet, this much, you know, and, and should have like guidance for, for each each one of those like the utxo should be no smaller than this no greater than that so yeah i mean the fact is people think that like you can just come into bitcoin and not learn anything but that's not it's not gonna like it is inherent people have to learn uh if they want to do it if they want to at least be efficient or else they can stick with uh custodial things or else they can pay the price for it but it, bitcoin forces you to learn um if you want to if you want to do it right i agree wholeheartedly there but 
you know, my whole philosophy is if I'm going to sit here in this space and make content and throw my thoughts out there, I would like to save as many people from those painful lessons as possible. And like, th this is something I'm actually going to start doing um, as a regular kind of experiment. But last time I bought Bitcoin on Cash App, um, I just bought like 10 bucks. It was like around 30,000 sats at the time to load an open dime. I'm going to give to somebody to try to just get them playing with things. And um, the batched withdrawal transaction from Cash App, like a third of those those outputs were just like, you know, 10, 5, 2, 3 dollars. And I really seriously wonder how many people out there are just averaging into Bitcoin, individually withdrawing tiny ass outputs like that with no clue the consequences they're making for themselves. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how much that is happening. Um, but that is so again, this is something that it's not ju it's not unique to multisig. This is something that's that is uh, a Bitcoin but thing that people are gonna have to learn. Yeah, uh, sure, you know, but that's the kind. Of, that's the thing. I'm the person that's going to be setting up this kind of multisig is not going to be saving at a three dollars at a time. You know, that's not what this is for. So no one should be told to 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 spend thousands of dollars or maybe about a thousand dollars to set up a, a really good multisig. Um, you know, setup to to save their five bucks at a time. Uh, you know, cash app. Uh, purchases. I, I I I really like uh, my cash app because I have friends that just like you know pay me like you know whatever borrow some money here or there like split a bill or something. All that just goes straight like it does not even it like doesn't hit the hit the balance. It just goes straight into Bitcoin. So that's that's pretty much all I I use my cash app for is those like five dollar, seven dollar, ten dollar purchase. But I don't. Um, I don't withdraw that, you know, I don't withdraw it until it hits some kind of threshold, just like with, uh, with Swan, I think I have it set to a million sats or something before you are, uh, before the withdrawal happens so that you you don't, you don't want to be stuck with that. But my, I don't know, my, 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 um, blue wallet, like my, my, um, uh, phone wallet that I use that might have some I might have some serious problems there with UTXOs but I, fees are still cheap so <laughs> just enjoying it while it lasts but see Rabbi you are a competent Bitcoiner and the sad thing is that an idiot doesn't have to be told how to be an idiot they just always figure out how to be an idiot. <laughs> they figure it out right away it comes naturally <laughs> Um, but so what do you think the solution is there? What, what do we do? I mean, just get them all. Just, I mean, the only thing I can think of is just get them straight to lightning. You know, that, that you know, is to have them skip the main chain, basically, and, and just onboard directly to lightning, which we're also probably a couple years away from that, uh, you know, at, a, at, at scale. But that seems to be the solution to avoiding UTXO problems. Yeah. But I mean, like, honestly, I, I really just think that, you know, going through these kinds of issues with people and talking about all the different options, there needs to be a lot more explicit caveats and kind of spelling out options. You know what I mean? There's so many people put so much time into like here's what you should use here's how you should use it content and that's so valuable in this space but i feel like the options and the, the ways people can screw themselves or create problems is growing to the point where <clears throat> that kind of stuff needs to kind of add more caveats like tell people less what to use and like think more what do you think you should use and get people asking questions rather than just following like one two three guidebooks you know what i mean yeah it is so unique i mean that's everybody i don't even think that you can just write a guidebook about it i think everyone needs a, a bitcoin friend you know like a, you know an uncle john uncle jim that uh every you like you just have to be onboarded by somebody you know, everyone 
is getting onboarded by pretty much by somebody else, like, you know, it, directing them in the D. I mean, for me, I've probably, um, you know, personally either spoke, spoken to someone on the phone or like over some, you know, chat message that I don't know, I've never met, is a friend of a friend or just found me on, on Twitter or something. And I've like g- guided them on what services they should use, what kind of wallet, like what, just generally like for them in their circumstance how they should be a bitcoiner um and i'll tell different things to like my dad's neighbor who called me up uh after he he's been a follower of paul tudor jones like for investment stuff so he's like a guy in his 70s and called me up and asked me about bitcoin and the kind of things i'm going to tell him are going to be completely different than what i'm going to tell you know my my buddy from rabbinical school so like it it's so personal it has to be personalized to what they can handle and what their goals are and so it's it's there's no one size fits all that's for sure mm-hmm. what do you think about liquid for for people i i feel like you've been almost surprisingly bullish on liquid um and i don't know this might start a whole separate conversation but like i used it a little bit i, I don't know like it, it just it feels like a little i like it it, in some ways, it's a lot better than Lightning because you don't have to worry about liquidity and all of this stuff. It's more like, you know what it's like? It's actually like Bcash. It's like Bitcoin, but it's fast, <laughs> cheap, but it's fast, cheap, and reliable, and it's more centralized, right? I mean, it's pretty much like, you know, it just doesn't have its own, uh, you know, token that's going to zero. But uh, it, it pretty much works like how, how, how Bcashers think Bitcoin should work. Well... So liquid's kind of a complicated thing from my vantage point um, currently. And I don't get me wrong, I, I love liquid. I was and still am bullish as fuck on it, but that's because it's a piece of financial infrastructure. Like liquid was not built so that normies can DCA and hodl Bitcoin on liquid. It was built to be an arbitrage settlement network between marketplaces. It was built to host things like, you know, security tokens and stable coins to arbitrage and trade and ultimately, you know, built out to be flexible enough to start doing um, more distributed um, financial contracts directly on chain with smart contracts. Like that's what that was for in everything they built out everything they pitched it as everything i saw in my mind and right now i see like all like where where the fuck is kraken where is um you know coinbase where the fuck are all these big marketplaces with a shit ton of liquidity plugging into liquid so that that trading traffic moving between marketplaces doesn't hog up block space that people could use for actual commerce for non-financial um trading use cases and like all all these businesses are just ignoring it and that that on its own level pisses me off um like kind of fuck kraken um for not actually doing shit like that while virtue signaling about the space but um well i have to get they did they did get in lightning before the end of 2020 so that was like what they said they were going to do so i i'll give them credit for that and pierre for uh saying that that's what they were gonna get it in so you know whatever they go slow and i'm not not saying that they shouldn't be working on uh on uh like on um liquid but you have to give give them some credit for that I will a little, but I still want to see. Coinbase is not uh, Coinbase is not like five years away from from Lightning, so who knows when they would, uh, you know, get involved with Liquid. Mm-hmm. But you, you know what I mean? Like that's that's what Liquid was built for, and I really don't like the way it's kind of being pushed now. That like you, you know you can DCA and just hodl on Liquid, or like you can make your retail. Like I don't like that. Because, like, that, that has always been something in my mind that would probably come to Liquid, like, that kind of use. I do not like how that's being pushed with where the, the infrastructure is to be able to get in and out of Liquid without interacting with the Federation. 
I really don't like that because without that easy in and out door where you don't have to KYC with some federation member, um, I, I see that as kind of just pulling people into a trust model that a lot of them might not fully understand and kind of acting like this is the same as Bitcoin on the main chain when it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that, that's a, that's pretty much answers. That's what I was kind of like wondering, like what your perspective is. So, um, yeah, I, I, the, that's the thing. The technology seems awesome. Like what the potential is, you know, that it can pretty much all the things that people say that they think is cool about Ethereum liquid can do, you know, better and cheaper, um, because it doesn't have the security theater of the, of the proof of work or proof of stake or whatever they have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, g going on with Ethereum. So it theoretically, you know, can do all of that. It's just it hasn't gained traction. And I was, yeah, I wasn't sure about, um, as far as there was this kind of discussion going on, um, from Brad Mills recently about like low, uh, you know, low price, Bitcoin transactions with Lightning or on chain, and I ended up looking at Liquid. So I used Liquid for the first time ever. Um, just like picked up, you know, twenty dollars worth of Liquid and moved it around to to experiment with it. And it's like, eh, you know, there's not there was nothing I could do with it. So I like got it, try, did a few transactions, and then and then just got rid of it. And like, you know, I've got I've got a couple Lightning wallets for when I want to use that, but. Pretty much, um, yeah, like, I feel like I, I've done a few years of, like, solid experimentation, and now I'm pretty, like, stable. Like, I'm at my, like, at a, a, a very stable point with my, like, node, lightning, multi-sig, like, I tried out liquid, like, I don't need to, I'm, uh, my amount of experimentation is kind of slowing down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I also end uh, whatever wasabi and like uh, you know uh, coin join that kind of thing. I guess there's more to do there, but that's like that's low low on my uh, my priority since I'm not like a hardcore uh, cypherpunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know it's kind of my attitude about those issues, and this is something I've said for years. The first thing that you should do getting into this space is ask yourself the question, are you okay with a record of you having bought Bitcoin existing somewhere? Um, answer that question and then start acting accordingly from the beginning. Because like, quite frankly, um, like stop telling people to do what you do just because you have reasons to like telling somebody who's trying to buy into bitcoin through like some tax shelter like an ira a 401k or as a legitimate investment they plan entirely on selling kyc later like telling them to go buy non-kyc bitcoin like what are you doing you're just gonna make a shit ton of headaches for that person probably yeah, there's so many different ways to Bitcoin. That really is the thing. There's so many different ways to Bitcoin depending on what on your use case. And they're all right basically, you know, as long as you're just doing your own thing, then then they're all then they're they all work as long as you're not losing your funds or you know, as long as you understand what you're doing and you're doing it intentionally and not making a mistake for yourself. Mhm. Mm well, I think we really covered. I, I said at the beginning, I didn't think we would actually be uh, uh, arguing and disagreeing so much in the end, and I think I was pretty much right. We 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 like you know uh, see a pretty closely eye to eye on how people should be uh, securing their Bitcoin, and the answer is lots of different ways. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it really just comes down to what is your situation and are you competent enough that you should be playing around with this? Yeah, absolutely. Don't get yourself into something that's over your head. That's the, that's the worst. And if you, if you do want to experiment with something over, over your head, you know, it, it's just gotta be an experiment. You know, it's gotta be play money. I don't believe in test net. You know, but uh, but you know, a play amount of money. So you know, if you want to set up a multi sig, if you want to try different kind of things, like I've lost money 
uh, enlightening. Like I've got, I have, to, you know, irretrievable funds by messing around with lightning and having, uh, you know, or with the, or this was in 2019, I think like backups not working or something like that. So like, whatever, I knew that it was an amount of money that, that could be lost, but like, that's the thing, you know, you have to give that a try and uh and be willing to lose something first and then once you really know it like inside and out then you can decide if that's you know even with the single sig even with just using a hardware wallet I mean, people don't understand uh you know the that their 24 words are i've had I, I, people um get fished or not fit I, I don't know, whatever the um you know you click the wrong link for um not for bitcoin but like for metamask you know, there's like you go on Google and search up MetaMask or something and you get the wrong website and then you put your 24 words in and then they're gone. So like I've had friends do that. Uh, it's amazing the kind of mistakes that some people make with their security. Just like things that seem so obvious to a Bitcoiner who's been doing it for for a few years and like the, the, the basics. Some people aren't, you know, haven't got those all quite down yet. Mm hmm. And I mean, you know, see, that, that's kind of another thing that I really think is like things just shouldn't work like this anymore. Like everybody from like our era, yeah, we tinkered around, we played with shit, we learned the hard way, but I don't really think that's tenable at this point, assuming everybody who tries to get their hands on Bitcoin should go through that curve because that's going to bite way harder <laughs> than it will, um, or than it used to for people in our, you know, right. Also the, pe the people who are the tinkerers who are like the early adopters are, are here. They've done that. The, the next wave are the less, you know, technically inclined, although that's not, that's not really true. And like young people, you know, I'm, I'm bullish on the you know younger Bitcoiners, people who are are kids and teenagers now. That in uh, in I'm talking like five to ten years that they grew up natively digital, you know, and with with uh, with all, with money was is natively digital and all, everything, books and all all media and everything is they didn't have a non digital so. I think they're going to have an easier time than trying to convince even people that are in their 30s or 40s or, or older now how to mess around with this stuff. There's just like those mental blocks. I deal with that a lot. You know, I'm a, a, a being a teacher. Um, I'm I'm not officially the like the IT specialist, but in my school, I, a lot of our um, fellow teachers are you know older folks. Um, including like the principal and, and all kinds of stuff. So there's certain things that I just have to be the person helping out, have to be, you know, getting them to do what I think is such an easy task, but they just have a mental block. So younger people have less of those mental blocks. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But it's just like, I think that the last horror story I want to divulge here is the last um, friend of a friend I helped set up a wallet. Um, I, we, we were having some beers, chilling, and I kind of just walked through him setting up his ledger, which I will note he did not get from Ledger. So, um, oh, <laughs> well, I mean, also, by the way, you know what they say, uh, you know, there's a rule of ne don't drink in multi sig. That's uh, that's like the first <laughs> rule of <laughs> don't drink in multi sig is is step one. I, I would say don't drink in Bitcoin, <laughs> but um, right, yeah, I, I, I went through the whole thing, showed him how to set it up. And then was gonna wipe everything, and it's like you know what to do. And he's just like, no, 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 leave it set up. The, the seed you just made, just give me that. Like, leave it set up. That's good. Like, I, it's it's cool. I trust you. you just give me that seed. And he, he would not it's like actually reset things and go through that himself. He was just like, give me the seed you just made. That's good enough. Yeah, you know, that's, 
the fact is, is that he's, he was probably right. You know, it's theoretically not right to do something like that. But, uh, but in practically, you know, tr trusting you, what are you going to remember the 24 words that you just set up for him? You know, I don't know. Uh, it, practically, it, it probably is going to work out okay for him. Well, because he's lucky and I'm not a thief, but like, I'm just like, I can't help when I, I think about the next wave of people just cringing inside, thinking about all the things like that that are going to happen. And it's just like, how, how does that all get addressed? Yeah, but I mean, still, yeah, a, a lot of them are just going to be on custodians is the thing. A lot of them are going to be like using something like Strike or using just Cash App. And I mean, if Cash App like could integrate um, lightning like built in or something like custodial lightning or whatever, like that you can just do bi Bitcoin to Bitcoin and and like um, um, uh, what's it called? Like uh, merchants kind of services so a lot of people might just be uh, i feel like there's a lot of work that's going on to to keep people on custodians um at least for small amounts and so that's why there really has to be like a good effort also into getting people off custodians um and particularly for larger amounts listen if somebody's got a couple hundred bucks on a custodian then like who cares but you know if bitcoin is becoming your store value then it's got to be yours all right, cool. <laughs> so I think we covered everything. Yeah, I think we did a pretty thorough job systematically. Well, I mean, it was definitely a fun talk, and I'm uh, glad you dropped by here and I uh, came on. So yeah, uh, it's always good to meet Bitcoiners, you know, in 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 the format that we that we do. But uh, I like to, you know, get make sure that we get some face to face time, so to speak. Voice chat is always better than Twitter. Always. Yeah. But yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed listening to this episode. Uh, thanks for coming on, Rabbi. Catch you All right, take months. care. All right. Hello, <laughs> <laughs>